Are you my son? I'd be very proud to believe so. You are not my son. There's your girl over there. What's up, Deadheads? Welcome to Dead Guys Talking. I'm Johnny Walker. And I'm Dead Guy Ty. And welcome to our Dead Guys Talking show that we haven't done in a long time. Woo! <laughs> so man, we're uh, making up for lost time. We're going with uh, some some nice scotch um, instead of our usual brouhaha. I mean, we we oof, yeah. <laughs> Taking a step up this one. Haven't watched our reaction video for the Comic Con trailer for season eight? Go ahead and do so. There's a there's a link below. Uh, but yeah, so we just watched the trailer. I watched it once before, so that was actually my second time. That was your first time, so you kind of heard our uh, initial reactions about the trailer. So let's just kind of dive a little bit deeper into it. So like the first, so it's a five minute trailer. Mm -hmm. um, starts off with uh, Father Gabriel, in, in which it looks almost like maybe he. He's in the RV because they're surrounded by walkers, and then of course there's someone else in the room as well. Okay, yeah, I could I could see that. Yeah, I didn't really notice that that that's you know what it appeared that they were in the RV, but yeah, you're probably right. Maybe I mean he could be anywhere. He could be in a like a maybe a storage container. Yeah, like something like that. Yeah, I just saw I, I saw windows with there's walker hands around. So I mean maybe which would be kind of cool. Maybe there's there's some instance that. Uh, Father Gabriel's running away for some walkers, and maybe Negan is kind of holed up in the same place. Maybe that's after kind of the battles oh. hitting the, you know, the shit's hitting the fan. And that's why the shit your pants. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Yeah, because uh, Father Gabriel usually has a, he's <clears throat> since he's been kind of a bitch, and he's made the turn to kind of a badass. He's kind of taken on this cool persona when he's dealing with other people, mm -hmm. but he does have quite a walker phobia. Right. So it yeah. looks like maybe that's what he's reacting to, and then just so happens that Negan's in there as well. Yeah, and regardless of how, you know, who you are, I mean, you're still going to be a little intimidated by Negan. Yeah. You know? I mean, maybe not so much if you're Rick or Daryl. They may be, you know, stone cold, but right. most or of the Carl. people... Or Carl. Or Carl, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but most people are going to be intimidated when it comes to Negan, just because of his larger-than-life type, you know. Right. And larger than life toothpick that he likes to bash yes. people in the head with. Yes. Um, but then the the next, I want to say a good what sixty seconds, ninety seconds is com probably longer, two minutes. Yeah. Of just no dialogue. No. Yeah. Absolutely no dialogue. Just uh, very intense. Just serious looking faces on everybody. Uh, looks like they're, you know, getting ready for something. They're. Uh, setting up bombs yeah. stuff like that and uh the one part that i really liked and, and I, you saw you reacted to it too when uh they had i think i forget if it was aaron or something but they all kind of did at one point they had pieces of alexandrian wall on yeah. the side of the car yeah so it looks like either they're having some kind of mobile barrier or maybe they're transporting something and, and fortifying I don't know, a hilltop or something? It seemed to me that it was like a barrier. Yeah. So it was, I think it was Aaron. Yeah, it was Aaron. He was driving the car and had, yeah, like the same, you know, like that tin. A sheet metal yeah, kind of. sheet metal, you know, uh, whatever, thin piece of tin, whatever it was. On the outside of the car as he's driving, it looked to me like he was, it was some sort of a barrier. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a threat coming from that side. Maybe it's to try and stop. You know, rounds from coming through, yeah. walkers, all of the above. I don't know, but it was pretty freaking cool. Because I think the AK count was probably around 40. Like, everyone yeah. has an AK <laughs> in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, some sort of <laughs> automatic rifle. <laughs> right, yeah. And this trailer kind of had a little bit of everything. We got some Shiva, uh, Shiva mm -hmm. um, a, a little bit. We got some... It, it was pretty devoid of walkers until kind of later on. Mm -hmm. And then the, the walker close-ups we did get were f fantastic. Yeah, at least uh, walkers interaction was kind of mm -hmm. you know towards the end of it yeah and it's always carl on his back you know almost getting eaten <laughs> right <and> always in <laughs> every course. single season so we got the obligatory carl's in peril you know shot but um the the one person that did stand out which you may comment of you know my favorite character of all time tara actually had some cool stuff going on yes in this. she did she even did like a badass little one yeah you know <laughs> and eating a red rope yeah, and she was a <laughs> Twizzler, or a, yeah, a red vine, or right. whatever. Yeah, um, I still think she's dead this season. Think so? <laughs> yeah. 
And now that Morgan says that he's he doesn't die, he's totally dead. Yeah, I'd say Morgan's gonna go. And then it showed looked like Morgan and Jesus fighting in the woods. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what do you think that's all about? I don't know. It didn't look very fair because Jesus was just kind of barehanded, right? Yeah. And then uh, Morgan had his bow staff. Yeah, it just looked like, you know, Jesus was just kind of slipping the, yeah. his uh, attacks. and uh, <clears throat> But it was only a brief second, so I don't really know what to make of it. But, I mean, that was an MMA fight. I would like to see it. I mean, if you want to pick two people that are going to go hand-to-hand, that's two people that I, I would want to see. This is true. Maybe except for a lightsaber battle with... An actual lightsaber battle. Stop it. Like, <laughs> talk about that kind of lightsaber battle. Between Negan and uh, Morgan would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we even saw Shit Rat, the guy that got the, the kid killed um, mm -hmm. from the kingdom. Uh, a lot of a lot of King Ezekiel. Trust the king. Yeah. Um, a bloodied up King Ezekiel. King Ezekiel. Yeah, that, that almost looked like a last stand kind of thing. But I couldn't tell if it was his own blood. Right, yeah. Him because his, you didn't see any wounds, you just seen like blood in his in his dreads and on his right. face. So it could be a good thing if it's someone else's blood. Could they have been doing the guts trick? Hmm. Maybe. Uh, and with uh, Ma he's hanging out with Maui. I'll call him Maui. Yeah. I forget yeah, his name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he's awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like. Uh, but that particular scene looks. Um, you know, it's probably very misleading. A lot of these. Right. Scenes are picked to you know appear you know make us feel one way and of course it's yeah. another, but that that was cool and it looked like every shot that uh, your favorite character Mr. Daryl Dixon it was just uh, with explosions. Yes, might as well had a giant American flag in the background <laughs> superimposed. Yes, and just a big America. Well, he, he <laughs> is Chuck Norris. Yes, yeah. so <laughs> he, he, he personifies America. <laughs> America. America. Yeah, uh, and then, you know, with the uh, shooting the explosives while driving the, the motorcycle, I, I didn't see what, who, how was on the, was the receiving end of those explosives, but mm -hmm. I'm sure it had to be intentional, but maybe it was just to lure walkers, maybe yeah. it was just to create a distraction. Maybe it was wh when they were putting the, the kind of Tupperware mm -hmm. over whatever and he's shoot, or, shooting those yeah. or something like that, setting, like you said, setting off some kind of a... Diversion or, or Walker alert or something like that. Right. Um, but yeah, and you said that <laughs> one of my favorite scenes of the entire thing is this in very environmentally minded Walker is trying to get the paper <laughs> bag, uh, plastic bag off a tree branch. But you said that it looked like it was kind of uh, by Oceanside, so that could be a sign that Oceanside's completely wiped out. Yeah. That's what it looked like to me. It looked like it was the that woodsy area just outside of Oceanside. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, you know, he wanted to pick up some trash. So. When everything kind of uh, picked up and we started getting the speeches, do you, how do you feel about, like, the, the music that they use? Obviously, you and I are, qu are quite big fans of Dropkick Murphys. Of course. Uh, going back to, you know, our youth. Um, back, but, uh, back, back in the day, you know. When the Tuesday. rocks were soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, a million years ago when uh, we were in high school, yeah, we... Uh, and still drinking to, scotch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of drop kicks. So, yeah, yeah, definitely that's awesome. And I mean, drop kick uh, is very <clears throat> popular in movies where there's obviously build up action. Um, you know, generally somebody's running. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I think it kind of, it, um, you know, sets that tone of a build up to something that's, you know, something is going to happen, something big yeah. is going to happen. I know we've been waiting for it for all through season seven, and uh, I think it's safe to say we're going to get it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and just going back on that, like, Dropkick, you know, uh, Shipping Up to Boston is like one of the most played, like, walkout fight songs and like, MMA and stuff like that. And it's uh, it's very much of a build up in your, in your dressing room kind of shadow right, boxing. Right. So it's very fitting to have a Dropkick Murphy song as, you, as you're kind of going to war. Um, also to note, kind of devoid of Negan. I mean, we got, obviously we, we started yeah. off. He, he, I like that scene where he's banging, he's just pissed mm -hmm. off. He's banging uh, Lucille on the table. But besides that, yeah, not a lot of Negan. Good, good point. I didn't really, uh, that didn't really register. But yeah, it, it starts out with Negan and kind of makes you think he's going to be there more, like yeah. I said. And then yeah, not a lot. A little glimpse there, there, and then you know where he, you know, 
pounds Lucille down on the table, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Because, you know, he's got to be pretty pissed <laughs> to uh, use Lucille for other than bashing his right. brains yeah. in. <laughs> so, yeah, good point. Yeah, a lot, a lot of Aaron. A lot of Aaron. A whole lot of Aaron, a lot of Maggie, a lot of Tara. And uh, then, uh, and then we Jesus just, Morgan. Uh, yeah, Jesus you know. Morgan. Yeah, a lot of just uh, kind of religious symbolism, and just the the end. I mean, <laughs> it was very reminiscent to how they ended that one uh, episode last season. I forget the name, but of Rick, the close up of Rick, and he's just smiling. Like, what's with the oh, goofy yeah. end? Like, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, just random. Is it? I mean, obviously, it's some sort of a. Uh, insight to the future because I mean he's got that long gnarly beard so is it after the battle and it's showing that he's battle wounded and <sighs> still alive I don't know it's interesting because I, I know in the comic and we like to keep it spoiler free and we we are to to an extent but in the comic there's a there's a time jump after all out war you know after the whole after the dust settles and everything like that and uh, Rick does. I, I, don't know, I think it's like a seven year time gap. I don't know. Alex and Josh, help me out. But, um, or from Walking Bread, like you have no idea if this is your first time tuning in knowing what I'm talking about. Anyways, <laughs> just Alex and Josh. Yeah, Alex and Josh. <laughs> if there's an Alex and Josh out there, can you tell me, please? Um, you but, guys have to know each other, though. Yes, please. And be British. And yeah, and have some awesome 70s hair. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love oh, you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, that was some awesome Farrah Fawcett hair, bro. Yeah, there's a time jump, and Rick does have kind of an awesome beard, but you can't tell if he's if he's gray completely like he was in that shot because it's a black and white comic, obviously. So maybe that's showing post time jump. But why would you do that? Like, you want we still like, especially for non comic readers <clears throat> that don't know. Don't kind of show us that. Oh, okay, look, everything's kind of fine. Yeah, yeah. Don't <laughs> give it away. I mean, we. I mean, we know Rick's not going to die off anytime soon. But I mean, keep us a little bit on the edge of yeah. our seats. I mean, <laughs> it's all. Know. Look, here is the war, and everybody's fine. Yeah, <laughs> everybody lives. Spoiler. <laughs> Rick's on the mend, but yeah, with a nice little old man cane. So yeah, uh, any any more? Th I mean, I. Overall, I thought it was uh, very. It, it was exciting. Um, it, it was a little jarring from here to here just because it was like a Negan di uh, dialogue scene then it was like nothing no one saying nothing and then a lot of dialogue and explosions and then that weird ass God scene at the end so <laughs> it seemed a little disjointed as a trailer as a whole but it, it still got me pumped and ready for the main you know Walking Dead proper to come back yeah well and I think they kind of have been doing that intentionally uh, lately kind of giving you enough to intrigue you but at the same time confuse you and you know, keep you kind of guessing as to well, what exactly does this all mean? Yeah. And uh, one thing that I wanted to kind of get your take on a little sure. bit more is I mentioned it in the reaction at the end of the reaction was Dwight. Uh, we see uh, a decent amount of you just real brief, you know, pr you know, shots of of Dwight. Yep. But he's always looking like he's up to something. Yeah, you know, he's got that kind of ferret mousey face anyway. <laughs> this is true. He's always up to no good. <laughs> but it's a little extra suspicious. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, is he fully on board? And then there was that note that, that said tomorrow. Right, right. So is he fully on board with the survivors? I mean, what do you, what's your take on that? I think so. I think he's completely assimilated to the other, to the survivors. Um, I think that we're going to see a lot of that at first, these back and forth kind of uh, notes and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but he's probably going to have to make some kind of hard decision uh, to show his loyalty, to kind of re-up his loyalty with Negan at some point during the thing. Very interesting to note, which I just thought of, is the omission of Eugene completely. Yeah, not one not shot one of the Good yeah. point. Yeah, which is, man, that's, uh, I don't know if that, I mean, that doesn't bode well for uh, Mr. Josh uh, McDermott, huh? Yeah. I mean, that could be good or bad. Once again, it could be completely just to, just to throw us off. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, I mean, just, I mean, you don't have to rate it, but what did you think overall? Just like, did you like it? Did you hate it? No, I mean, the trailer was good. Um, it definitely, like I said, it you know, kind of builds up with that Dropkick Murphys, and it kind of has that progression with the oh shit scene, or the shit your pants scene with <laughs> Negan, to the silence, and then you got the Dropkick Murphys and the explosion, so I, it, it, to me it gives me the impression of, of a build up and in, into something exciting, so. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm looking forward, you know, as always, but you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, and 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 I know that you're not caught up with uh, Fear the Walking Dead, but you know I'm on a big campaign right now. You know, if you want to see Fear the Walking Dead uh, season three spoiler reviews, you could check them out on this channel. Um, but I'm a big pusher for saying that Fear the Walking Dead this season for season three is the best show that no one's watching anymore. Everyone's jumped ship. That's what I hear. The show is amazing. Like season three is borderline, and I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this, but borderline better than season seven of Walking Dead proper. But it was it was just so good and so fantastic, and I'm I'm super excited to see Walking Dead main show again. Mm -hmm. But I mean I, I'm almost like man I want to see what what's next for for Fear. But really yeah, and, and I know there's a trailer for that too, and maybe we'll I'll do a, a reaction to that because I know he's not um, caught up with with the main you know whatever. But yeah, so that's that's kind of our in depth analysis of the San Diego Comic Con trailer for season eight. So we're both very excited for that. Now we're going to talk about a couple changes that we're going to have to our show, um, for better or for worse. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, um, if you follow me on Twitter at all, um, you've seen that I have accepted a, a job up to the Pacific Northwest. I'll be up in Seattle area. But fear not, Deadheads, uh, Dead Guys Talking is not going away, especially for, uh, you know, we're going to be gearing up and, and going right back into it for Season 8 when it comes back. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to have a little bit of a different format. This will probably be one of the last times that we do it, you know, barring me coming down to Vegas or, Ty, or Dead Guy Ty coming up to uh, visit. But uh, we're just going to have a little bit of a different format. We won't be sitting in the same room, but we'll still be with you guys. We'll still be around. Yes. Um, torturing you guys. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I've already threatened his life and did everything I can to get him to stay. He's <laughs> not budging. So. Yeah. So that sucks. But, but, you know, just to let you guys know. So some changes are coming. Um, now, uh, just... To kind of dive into some like big news that has been happening since we've been away, um, we lost. Uh, there was a ma two major deaths in the not only the Walking Dead community but the zombie, zombie community. Right, and that um, the first one we could talk about is the stunt guy. So, yeah, um, and I haven't um, read too much into it, or uh, I don't know all too much about it. Just that um, there was a stuntman that that died. Um, I know it stopped production for a little bit, stopped mm -hmm. filming for a little bit, um, rightfully so. Um, it's never, um, you know, it's, it's, it's whenever in any, in any industry or in, in environment, whatever, especially in a work industry, when people that you work with um, have some sort of a fatal accident, it's, it's obviously something that people take pretty serious, and it's obviously unfortunate. So Yeah, so uh, rest in peace, sir. Um, I know it was some kind of, uh, due to some kind of fall. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, exactly how it happened. It's the fact that it did happen. So that, that was very sad news. The second um, person that we lost was just a giant in not only... Um, zombie, you know, zombie culture, horror culture, but the just film, you know, community. One of the pillars of, you know, just making film in general, you know, a pioneer, and that's George Romero. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you're into any, you know, zombie, you know, movies, uh, zombie films um, outside of The Walking Dead, you obviously, you've heard the name George Romero. You know how big of an impact he had. Um, so. Definitely a, a loss. Yeah. And, uh, but you know he uh, he lived a great life and he left him his mark and uh, you know he'll be uh, I'm sure he'll be missed by many. Yeah. I, I, man, just like Night of the Living Dead and all that stuff. You know, Day of the Dead. It just absolutely amazing things. Trailblazer, of course. You know, there would be no Walking Dead. Right. There would be no fear, no nothing with, without Way any of this. Before zombies were cool. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Resident Evil, the list goes on. You know, all this stuff is influenced by this man's vision. Our, our condolences out to the families. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and raise our glass. Yeah. Ah, 
yeah, that's pretty much it um, for this episode of Dead Guys Talking. This was just kind of a, hey, we're, uh, we're still here. Um, we're not going to look like this anymore. Well, I mean, I'm not getting a sex change or anything. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about mom and dad. <laughs> but uh, we're still here. Uh, we're still going to be uh, booking more trivia matches in the future. So fear not, deadheads. Uh, we're here to stay no matter what it looks like in the background. So um, that's it. We'll see you probably back for around season eight premiere. Maybe do a, a before, just kind of gear up uh, show, and then we'll kind of jump into weekly reviews and discussions. We're, it's like we're talking about this right now. <laughs> yeah, we're, kinda, we're, we're literally like <laughs> yeah. just discussing and agreeing upon this. Yes. So. <laughs> well, you know, you, me, and, and uh, Dimple Pinch. Uh, Live discussion panel, right? Yes, here. indeed. So, any questions? And Good. Nipple pinch. I mean, nipple pinch. <laughs> That's after the camera turns off. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm Johnny Walker. I'm Dead Guy Ty. And we will see you guys soon.